<laughs> Better late than never, I suppose. This is the July upgrade. Hi everyone and welcome back to the Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. My name is Gem and I have found this underneath a pile of other stuff that I've just um, unpacked in one of the few remaining boxes. This is the July 23 update, so you've probably seen plenty of videos of this already. I have managed to steer clear of all this because I've been really busy. I've not been paying much attention to social media, so this box isn't actually spoiled for me. I was going to do a double unboxing with the July scroller box as well, but mine has just never appeared. Um, I think it might have got caught in the crossfire between the old cave and the new cave. Um, and it's just disappeared somewhere because uh, I have a redirect on for my mail and it hasn't appeared via redirect. Um, so I've reached out to scroller box and they've said if it doesn't appear they'll send me another one. Anywho, so we're, we're, we're just on the, on the one monthly box and this is the oh, subscription box from Germany. Oh goodness me. So uh, yeah, let's surprises for Gem Gem. Probably not surprises for anybody else. Ooh, red. So let's take a look at the stuff underneath first because I always find that quite interesting. More Hello Fresh. What is with these? Uh, these stickers are lovely. We're looking at really bright and bold colour from the co-captain, which is Amber Vittoria. Mm, I'm wondering what is in this box. It looks quite textured, so it looks like crayons. Isla, are the papers really textured? That might be a thing. Uh, they're, they're, I like kind of like the patterns, that's cool. And here is our bottle post. Oh no, see now that I see it like that, it looks like paint. And what have we got here? Uh, okay, oh, so they're called are the artist of the month here. The, they used to be called co-captains. Um, artist and poet working in New York City. And yeah, this is like, looks like paint pours to me, which is quite interesting. Uh, we've got Canson, oh goodness me, Canson paper. And we've got three sheets, so we're on bare minimum. This is really textured, really, really textured. And it's, it is quite yellow. That's not the camera doing that. It is like a... It's an off, off, off white, I would say. And it's obviously A5 format. Oh, I'm intrigued. It kind of feels like really knobbly, bobbly watercolour paper, but I don't want to say that it is watercolour paper. So let's uh, let's pull this open and see what is inside. I'm kind of enjoying the red, oh, red tissue paper. Oh my good GB grief. Oh, lordy. Two, two lolly sticks. We call these lolly sticks. Uh, call them what you like. Two wooden sticks. A roll of highest grade water-based glue masking tape. And there's 20 metres of this. That's quite a lot of tape. I'm very fussy about my tape. Um, I am planning on uh, eventually, probably for Christmas, I shouldn't even be telling you this right now because it might not happen. Um, I'm planning on getting some washi tape designs for the stash shop, probably for Cavemas uh, for Christmas time. What I have learned is all sticky tapes are not made equal, uh, so I really hope this is high quality. Anywho's off on a tangent again. This makes me want to cry. This is Talon's acrylic paint. I have acrylic paint coming out my ears. I have got so I do not need any more acrylic paint. I've got all these colours a million times over. Titanium white. Um, there's a really nice selection of colours here. I don't even know what to say about this box. Okay, and um, we've got a scraper as well. Um, I'm going to put these back in here. I do like squeegee scrapery things, I'm not going to lie. That one's quite rigid. There's not a lot of bend in that. Um, and the, the, the tape, right. I'm going to, there's, there isn't really anything to swatch out here. I'm, I might do a little swatch of the acrylic paints in my sketchbook because um, we've only got three sheets of paper. This tape feels like the uh, stretchy bandages I put around uh, Pip and Jock's feet when they've injured themselves. Not so much now. Uh, okay, it's not quite as stretchy, but it is really spongy. It's easy to tear. Okay, so what I'm going to test this for when it comes to the swatching part of the video, what I'm going to test this for is I'm going to test how much water it can take. I will stick it to a sheet of paper and batter it with water and see what happens. Um, and I think I will swatch out the um, these little tubes of paint. Uh, but before we get to that, let's take a quick look at our bottle post. Let's see what the crack is here. Okay, so the thing I like about the bottle post magazine is it goes straight into the contents and there's always a really good description about each item that comes in the box. So this is heavy body acrylic. So heavy body paint is thicker and uh, it kind of leans more towards impasto and giving you texture and things. Um, you can see that the little blobs are standing up on end. I always think when you make meringue, um, you know when you stiffen egg whites when they peak um, and they stand up on their own, that's the kind of consistency you're looking for. 
Uh, heavy body paint for firm brush strokes, knife marks, great texture and a soft satin finish. It's got 100% acrylic resin binder, which makes it durable and flexible. Odorless water-based formula that becomes waterproof and permanent when dry. 70 colours and it'll stick to most surfaces as does most acrylic paint. Masking tape. Highest grade water-based glue, ideal for a wide range of general purpose fine art uses, including stenciling, tracing and masking edges during painting. Low-tack adhesive helps prevent damaging the surfaces. It is easy to reposition and move and remove from the surface. Yeah, the main thing I find with these tapes is how, especially when they're low-tack, if you put a lot of water on them, how quickly they peel up. Um, but you also don't want it to stick too much because then when you do go to take it up, it takes half the paper with it. It's a very fine balance. Squeegee! <laughs> <laughs> it's specifically designed for applying paint on surfaces. Well, isn't that marvellous? And too many wooden stirring sticks. Use these handy wooden stirring sticks to mix colours with water or to mix colours before the application with the squeegee. Any container, e.g. a drinking glass or mug, can be used for this purpose. And here is the Cans Me Tint number 111 paper. 160 GSM pulp dyed colour paper. Buffered manufactured acid free in a neutral environment. Mm -hmm -hmm -hmm. It has an exceptional cotton content, except they don't tell you how high the cotton content is. A sensuous feel. No, it's not sensuous at all. It's knobbly bobbly. I don't like it. Okay, they're saying it's got the different texture on each side. Um, yeah, oh yeah, I like this. Okay, this side's sensual. Take that back. <laughs> Honeycomb side characteristic of methane and fine green on the other. Yep. Okay, so charcoal and pencil on the fine green. Um, it comes in 50 light resistant tones. That's interesting. It's also available in a pad. It says as a book that might be a book or a pad. Hardcover, elegant, elastic, bland closure. No, definitely a book. I'm not really into Canson paper. But yeah, okay. Cool. Okay, um, so we're saying some of Amber's work here as well, and she's uh, she's doing a lot of pulling colours into each other, dumping it out. These look as if they've been done with maybe paint markers, but maybe not. Well, just the way the overlaps are and how clean the lines are. It's quite interesting. I like these ones where the colours go into each other. Like I like that a lot. Oh, I like that too. They don't actually say this is what we're doing, but this is tips for paint pulling. Um, there was a kind of trend, um, I saw it mostly on Instagram, at one point of um, chain pulling with paint, and it made some really cool patterns. So I think that's where we're going with this. Pull the paint with a firm grip on the squeegee. Pulling paint too lightly may yield globs getting stuck. Peel the tape off slowly, have fun. Okay, so here is Catherine uh, with her box and she has drawn uh, drawn someone with an impressive pair of trousers on that look a little bit like curtains. And she has, she's cut out the character's top, so I'm assuming she's going to put, yeah, yeah, look. Ha! So she's made patterns, and she's basically made little stencils and then made patterns on the clothes. I really like this. That's cool. That's fun. Okay, yeah, I kind of like that. Sailor of the Month, Julie, Judy in the Sky Net. Oh, wow, look at this. That is so cool. Oh, I enjoy her. I enjoy her art very much. I've never heard of this person. I'm going to be uh, reading this and following her. This is, I just love this. That's excellent. Okay, here's my friend Emily. And here's her little colour wheel with all her acrylic paints. Oh, interesting look at the texture. Oh, interesting indeed. Very interesting. Oh, okay, Upcrate Battle, Circular Village. These are some of the entries. I'm, I think I saw this one on, on Instagram, maybe. This is this kind of reminds me of my own, except a, a bit better. <laughs> Always say I'm not a painter. This is kind of nice too, though. I like the owl. These are cute. Oh, we've got Upcrate News. I Upcrate Subscribers. Upcrate are changing to an electronic magazine. Um, I'm really unhappy about that. The the box just will lack substance. As a substitute though, what they're saying is we're going to get more paper in the boxes. So we're not going to get loose paper anymore. It's more likely to be pads of paper. So I can see the trade-off. But a huge part of these boxes for me is not actually what's in the boxes. It's the experience and what you can get out of it. And this is a huge, huge, huge part of that. And looking at stuff on a screen, I can do that. I can I can watch my own YouTube tutorials, you know what I mean? Um, so this, this is really bad news for me. It's gonna be a QR code. 
I, I'm sick of seeing stuff on screens. I do traditional art to get away from screens. I don't want to go and look at the magazine um, on online in any way, shape or form. So I'm a bit disappointed about that. I, I routinely, in fact, I did it in the last video, give away paper bundles because I've got more paper than I know what to do with because I get more than one subscription box every single month. Um, so I, for me personally, I know that's going to suit a lot of people because you'll never have to buy any paper again. Um, for me, it's a bit of a waste, honestly, and I'm really disappointed that they've decided to go down this route. There is going to be a separate conversation. It's actually a conversation I want to have in a live stream and I think I'm going to try and do that. I haven't tested my internet connection for live streaming yet, but I really do think we need to have a huge discussion about um, subscription boxes in general. But that, that will be upcoming and I'll keep you posted on that. So that's kind of put a bit of a dampener on things. I, I teamed with the supplies that are in this box, I'm just, uh, truthfully, I'm just not that impressed this month. But there you go. Let's turn over the page then. And the battle topic is liquid forms. There's a surprise. Uh, whether clear shapes or colourful rainbow gradients, Amber Vittoria deals with femininity, emotions and social expectations. What do you associate with your abstract shapes and gradients that create with Upcrate 47? Tell us a story that, for now, only you can see. Show us your shapes, edges, gradients that show your emotions or with which you want to express completely different things in stories. In short, this month you can try out, test and create more than ever before. It's a really open-ended box. <sighs> I, d I honestly... If you're going to do a box like this, I have no objections to boxes like this because it is a nice change of pace and it breaks the monotony of the marker boxes, the pencil boxes, which we all know and love, but, you know, they, they do get to be a bit much. I think that they have provided what they have provided, which is fine. It's just not, it's just not that exciting. There's only so much you're going to give in the way of supplies. I get that. But if you're going to do this kind of box, the value is in the techniques and the inspiration and the guidance that you're hoping to get from this magazine. And the reality of it is, apart from Emily's um, example, which it, that is literally all it is, is an example. And the, the one sort of tutorial type this is really the only methodology we have apart from literally like two or three tips that are given by the featured artist. I feel as if this magazine is dwindling in substance and it's quite obvious now that the reason for that is they want to go to a digital magazine because they can put much, much more in a digital format because obviously they don't have the cost of printing it. And it's optimised and interactive for your smartphone. So if I do decide I want to do stuff, I've got to do it on a tiny screen on my phone. Can I not do it on my absolutely massive monitor that I paid loads of money for? Um, like, I don't know. Maybe I'm just getting old. Maybe I'm old fashioned. Um, but I like, oh, just, I don't know. Right, let's, uh, let's do a quick swatch out and we can try out some different methods and tactics and I feel as well especially with a box like this three sheets of paper is an absolute joke like I, I really do if you're going to give us something like that give us cheaper paper and give us loads of chances to try stuff out because you've not given us any, any guidance and we've got all these colours and quite frankly I don't know what I'm doing so um yeah I think we might have to make some augmentations here but <laughs> well, I'm going to clean all this away and we're going to try some stuff out Okay, so in addition to the supplies that have come in the box, I've got myself some extra bits and pieces as well because honestly, I don't really know where this is going. <laughs> um, so I'm going to use one sheet of the paper that came in the box just to test out these colours and see how thick the paints really are because it doesn't actually say on the tubes that they are uh, heavy body, but they do define them as expert acrylic. I don't know whether that's their way of saying heavy body, but it doesn't actually say it on the tubes. So uh, yeah, there's that. So I'm basically just gonna blob a bit onto, it is quite rigid to be fair. Pyrol or pyrrol red, I never know how to pronounce that. Uh, yellow, permanent lemon yellow. Oh, a nice green color. Always appreciate a good green, guys. Um, permanent green deep. 
trouble reading that there. And we've got a, a titanium white. I think that was it, wasn't it? You can really see that white against this paper. Well, you can't. If I zoom in, you might be able to. Um, just because the, the colour of the paper is a, like an off-white. Yeah, that's us. So um, what I've got here just for testing this out, I've got a wee bit of water and a paint puck in a wee glass jar here. Um, but I brought over a square tipped paintbrush just so that we can see what these colours look like. So just a damp brush. Um, that I'm pretty sure this is heavy body because if I do this, <laughs> can you see how much the paint standing up off the paper? Others, they look like little gnome hats. So <laughs> I really hope you can't hear that drilling noise in the background. I do have workmen in today. I have a plumber in today amongst other things and they are drilling holes in my walls. So I've shut all the doors. <laughs> Just hope that's not going to be too noisy. Okay, um, this is definitely going to keep its um, rigidity. Unless, of course, we water it down. That's a different situation. Okay, let's take a look at the green. Ooh. The paint's very opaque as well. You can see that fairly clearly from the... Um, you know, just from what we're doing here, pulling it across this paper. Just make sure I give my brush a good clean before we change colours. And the yellow. The colours are very vibrant. Something I've noticed since I've moved here to the new cave and my setup's different. I was talking in the last video um, about my um, my white wall behind the behind like over here instead of a window, and it's actually balanced out the the lighting and the colour much better. Like I notice the colours are much more true on the camera to what I'm seeing with my naked eye than they were in the old cave, and I think it's because the camera's not having to compensate for the natural light that's coming in this direction. So that's actually quite an interesting observation but yeah the the camera the light balance on the camera seems to be a lot more sensible so maybe there's something to be said for it a sitting face in a blank wall when you're filming <laughs> also the acoustics are better because obviously it, it stops as much echo so i think i've done the right thing okay so that is our color range these are going to mix like normal acrylics um it's not really going to be a a thing while this is wet though and in its pure form uh, as i say i've got a couple of other bits and pieces with me um things to make texture and uh, just generally um have a bit of fun with this but i thought a palette knife would have been a sensible thing to give us in the box i don't know why we didn't get one um but if i start you know like there you go straight off the bat we've got something that's a little bit more interesting and this is just the swatches and with this textured paper you know you could you could have something quite quite fancy going on there so i think i'm probably going to favor something like a palette knife i do have the the big squeegee which i think honestly i think it's a bit overkill for what we're doing here let's see if i can like what happens if i just i know i'm supposed to tape the paper down but look at that i can get some really smooth color and it goes on for ages so that might make a, a nice background for something there but i'm hoping with it being acrylic paint i'm hoping it's going to dry fairly quickly and we can you know use that as a background and you know put some more stuff over the top i'm quite happy with the paints themselves as i say the the amsterdam paints from royal talons i've always quite liked them i actually really like the tubes as well they're a good size especially if you tend to work more on a5 rather than you know larger pieces which i tend to kind of favor um i like to work somewhere in between a4 and a5 actually just to be really awkward you know and um, the old 8 by 10 the the paper though look at the paper that paper doesn't have any water on it that is just the paint and i know they tell you to tape your paper down but i mean mm, i'm just not honestly not that interested in this paper one of the other things i did grab though you like this actual acrylic paper this is 300 gsm so it is thick whereas the paper that came in the box this is only 160 so naturally this is going to stand up to stuff a bit better and this is made to work with acrylic paint and this is the the student grade Windsor and newton paper as well it's not expensive and uh, I, I quite enjoy it it does have that it does have that weird crisscrossy linen texture on it to make it look like a canvas some people really don't like that I kind of like it though. Anyway, that's that. The other thing that I did say I wanted to do was take a little bit of this tape, which is driving me crazy already. Um, it is fairly low tack. It's tacky enough to stick to something. Um, but what I wanted to do was batter that with water um, just to see how much it can take because if you have it peeling up that will peel off of there nicely i know that already just by pulling it off the roll 
um, but I'm not sure how well. I'm going to use my dirty paint water here just because I might as well. But I'm really going to, you know, as if I was maybe working some real edges next to that and really like, oh, you know, maybe there's like 60 layers of paint or something on this. So, oh yeah, like, oh, really going for it. All these beautiful layers of paint. We're going to have this multifaceted, beautiful artwork. Um, there we go. While we're in there, actually, there's a wee bit of red paint. Let's just plop that in there and see how well it dilutes. Because it is water-based, so it's water-soluble. Once it's dry, you can't do much with it. But while it's wet, um, you can do a fair amount with it. But just be aware, if you really water down acrylic, um, it starts to kind of break down a little bit and you end up with, like, sort of bitty bits in it because, obviously, it's not watercolour. But that's it. That's faring pretty well, actually. Uh, but this paint, obviously, being a heavy body paint and having huge amounts of it, it is still going to be wet. It's going to take a while to dry when it's that thick. I've got this little tool as well. This came from my um, polymer clay kit. You can see there, um, I wasn't actually going to use it as a wheel. I was actually thinking more about dragging it, you know, with the, um, yeah, with the teeth to see what we could do. That probably do something a little bit more interesting if there was a lot more paint on the paper there, but I just thought that might be fun to try too. This is going to work in the same way as the squeegee and it's actually almost exactly the same width. So I don't think I'm going to bother with this because I don't think we're going to gain anything from it. Um, but I would like to try with the sponge, but I think that would need to be like slightly damp. Yeah, that's that's dry. This one that we've squeezed out really thin, that's almost dry. You can get a nice sort of textured effect there as well. So again, that that might actually be good for overlaying. You know, if you wanted to like, I was thinking white over this. If you wanted like clouds or something, even if it was in a more abstract sense, it's just another thing that you could possibly do. Okay, I'm having a wee look at this tape here. It is starting to curl up at this corner. It is actually sitting in a pool of water though. I'm fairly confident that this tape's going to do a good job and uh, it's peeling off fairly easily as well. Um, so I'm going to leave that to dry and try and take the tape off once it's dry to see if it's going to pull the paper up with it or whether it's uh, as low tack as they say it is. I say that the, the, the tape thing is so difficult to get a good balance of that. I'm just running that red paint around. Um, so I'll be quite impressed if that's the case. I think honestly I'm just going to have a wee bit of fun with this real quick just to finish this video off. But I'm going to use a sheet of this Winsor & Newton paper. Um, it's just, it's a bit bigger. We've got a little bit more room for manoeuvre. But I was thinking more of like a paint pouring type consistency. Um, I, I don't know. Um, not maybe paint pouring, but if I squeeze a wee bit of that in there. Because a little bit of this paint's going to go a long way as well. Um, maybe try and make a purpley colour. I'm right into like purpley stuff just now. I don't know what's wrong with me. Again, someone commented in one of the last videos, did I intentionally match my top to whatever I was doing? And the answer was no. <laughs> and let's see if we can... That was too much water, clearly. My red's not wanting to do anything. Okay, so I'm getting quite a nice purpley colour here. <gasps> instantly happy that's kind of nice i'm kind of liking that i think it would um obviously you need some sort of craft knife or something which i should have to hand now that i've uh, you know i've got my, my super duper cave set up sorted out <laughs> i think our german counterparts got actually got a knife in the box um i'm not sure you're allowed to send stuff like that in the post now because the uk is outside of the eu i don't think we, we get cool stuff like that anymore but i'm pretty sure i remember looking in the magazine there i think they actually got a craft knife i'm trying to press hard enough here to take the um the tape off um but obviously lightly enough that i'm not scoring the paper underneath too heavily and that's a really difficult thing for me to do just because of my hand injury. I, I, I struggle judging pressure sometimes, especially when it's um, when I'm relying on the back part of my hand a lot, you know, because obviously I'm gripping with those fingers and then steering with my index finger and those are the fingers, these back fingers are the fingers I don't have any feeling in. So that's fun. Um, it was noted when, <laughs> obviously having just moved, we're putting together quite a bit of furniture. And uh, Mr. Jem has banned me from using an electric screwdriver because I don't realise how hard I'm pressing. <laughs> and I've nearly ruined two uh, countertops. So <laughs> uh, but I'm, a, I'm on um, manual screwdrivers only, but I am allowed a ratchet, which is nice. <laughs> okay, so I've cut out a wee funny shape there. Again, that's that's just, just for, literally just for funsies. Just for funsies. And I kind of want to like scoop some of this out. This has turned into a really nice purple colour as well. Like, oh. 
it's like a mauve. Okay, that is fairly runny. I have absolutely flooded that. I don't really know what I want to do with it. I, I kind of want that to be like a background and then do stuff over the top of it. I, I don't really want to join it up to this because that was fun over there. I think our lolly sticks are only going to be good for a couple of goes um, and then it's all going to go to hell in a handbasket. I think I would just do this in a palette. Honestly, I don't think you need to do this in a, a mug as suggested. I was uh, I was reading an article not that long ago on uh, a lady who jumps between hyper realism and creating abstract art, and obviously that's quite a, an interesting uh, contrast in art styles. And um, she was being interviewed for a magazine, and you know they were asking her like how basically how the heck did you decide that that was a good idea, and she has this amazing vision for abstract art like she's just got an eye for it and she says like she sees things and she just knows that that's what she needs to do with it this kind of reminds me of yogurt <laughs> i don't know like just a, like she's got an eye for composition and i just find it super interesting i think part of my my problem not problem but part of the reason it's not really in my sort of wheelhouse is that i've got quite a logical scientific brain and I want to try and make sense of everything. And I think that's maybe why I can't let go enough to, um, you know, to, to really embrace creating something decent in the abstract sense. So I, I don't know. That's just a theory I have. If anybody's got any ideas on that, I'd love to hear them. Like this is, this is, this is just basically a blob of paint. That is it. That is all. Are we having fun? Yes. Oh, there's a wee bit of green still on there. Are we worried about the outcome? No. Do we want to keep squishing the sponge? Yes. What goes well with purple? Yellow. I have to say that this paper is still buckling, but we've dumped a... I've nearly swore there. We dumped a lot of water on top of this, so that's to be expected, isn't it? But see, again, I don't... Do I really want to be dragging stuff? Dragon has... Rawr, dragon. Ho, 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 ho. See, now, what's going to happen? Because this is wet. If I drag down the way... Right, okay, I'm going to get my wee stick out again. See, it's like scraping the bottle of a yogurt pot. And maybe just put... Oh, try not to get down. Oh, instant regret. Ooh. Oh, yuck. Uh, yeah, so I've... <laughs> yeah, don't, I, I don't, honestly don't don't know how I feel about any of this. Um, <laughs> what I would like, and I, I, I feel that this is kind of like an appropriate way for me to, to do this all the time, is to take a paintbrush, clean it a little bit. White splatter fixes everything. <laughs> um yeah okay I, I think I'm done here <laughs> honestly I think I'm done okay so what do we think of the box oh I don't know I, I don't know I just this isn't really for me honestly um I always something I always appreciate about Upcrate is that they do put out stuff that's a wee bit outside the box so to speak and I always think it's quite brave and I quite like it. I think that for most of us as consumers if this is the only subscription box you're getting which is a very common situation now just because of the state of the economy and obviously the price of everything's gone up. I think if this was the only subscription box I was receiving um, I, I think I would be slightly annoyed honestly. We've had so much acrylic paint. They could have done this box. Like I don't think there's anything wrong with this as a concept but why not give us a box full of stuff like this rather than lots of paint um, because most of us do have a lot of acrylic paint just give us the primaries because you can mix anything from the primaries okay white's nice I have to say that you, do you see what I'm saying you could quite easily have done this exact box but with different supplies and it would be much more satisfying from a consumer perspective I would love to hear what you guys think about that I actually quite like this scraper I wish it had been a bit more flexible I don't know I would really really like to hear what you think I would also love to hear what you think about the bottle post situation and the fact that this is uh, this is going digital in order to give us more paper. The last thing I just want to do before we finish up here is take this tape off and see what happens. And that is starting to take the paper off. Can you see it there? It's actually pulled the paper off. So I would be very wary. Oh, Lordy. I've more or less got a hole in my paper now. 
Uh, yeah, so you're going to have to be very careful using this as well. I think it will depend on the paper as well. I think using this on thicker paper might be a better idea. So let's see if we can commandeer the tiny little slice that was here. I don't even know where the edge of that tape is. Oh, there it is. Yeah, that's come off there beautifully. It's perfect. Uh, so works much better on a thicker paper. Okay, guys, that is it for today. Thanks for coming and hanging out with me and uh, following along. I know this is uh, kind of irrelevant. Most of you will have, will have played with this box yourself by now. But that's more of a reason to jump down in the comments and let me know what you thought of the supplies. Uh, the paint's great quality. Um, I'm just not really sure this is my thing. So I will see you back in the cave on Sunday for another video. Have a great day, everyone. And bye-bye for now.